everybody. Catherine here with California Originals by Catherine and I am making some YouTube videos of unbagging vintage fabric right in front of you and this is my third one so I hope you're interested in what I have to say and the bags are pretty full there's only three of them though so let's get started. I'm gonna start by putting a couple of them on the ground so we have lots of room And the first thing, I wanted to start with this one because some of you may have an iron and some of you may not. But when you work with this kind of hand embroidered linen, this is only half of it here, linen tablecloth. And I do see there's a few maybe little flaws, but I think it's gonna iron out beautifully. And I wanted to start with this because in this video, I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of things that I make with these lovely fabrics. So this one, this is a linen shirt that I make with, this is what the wrinkled linen tablecloth is gonna look like when it's ironed. And these are lovely big shirts that I make with, I use pearl buttons and other linen, linen pieces to do a patchwork linen shirt. And here's one more. This is some lovely European cross stitch with red and white linen. So, but it's going to need some work before it's ready to go. And here is another, this is a plain linen tablecloth. It would go beautifully making my shirts with that because that's kind of off-white and once it's all ironed that would be a good match for it and that is just a, a large circular linen tablecloth in good condition okay next thing there's a couple pieces of cotton this one is flannel I do some darling um, little, oh, Linda, grab one of those little baby chenilles and we'll show them what we do. I work with vintage chenille fabrics too. And in my last video, I showed you a great big purple one that I got right at, right at the end of it. This is something I do and I put the flannel on the inside in patchwork of colors and babies love color and people love these and I can't make them fast enough. And I'm sorry to say, I'm not finding enough uh, chenille and lightweight pieces that's suitable for baby clothes, but here's that one. This is a piece of textured cotton, probably from the 60s. I can kind of, okay. I always pick this up when I can because I do a lot of projects using cotton. This is about 48 inches wide, so that says 60s or 70s to me. Some One thing I do with those pieces are these little baby jumper dresses. Oops, that one came off the hanger. With the, that fold up in the back, I know you've all seen these. And this is just the cute little accent on pink gingham. And this is another one in a larger size with it's, it's pockets all along the bottom. So I do those in several sizes. Next in the bag is a gorgeous, never washed, I can tell just by touching it, tablecloth. I make aprons out of these and all kinds of other things, skirts. I do shirts like this where I'm using a, some gingham or some plaid on the bottom part and a floral focus on the front. This is a little tailored shirt. It's a hat, one I've had for ages. This is actually madras fabric. Maybe in another video I'll tell you what that is. Keep you interested. So this is just a beautiful multicolor thing. It will go beautifully 
with, say, a piece of hand-embroidered doily or table runner or something with flowers on it for this part, which I call uh, picture framing. I think I mentioned that in my last video. Uh, here's another piece of linen. Not the end of this bag already. It is just yardage, and I grabbed it right away because you don't see linen very often in plain yardage at the thrift store. And this is four yards or so. It's going to wash beautifully, and it'll go with all kinds of things uh, like these shirts that I make. Okay, I'll put that back in there. Okay, bag number two is right here. And I'm going to ask my friend Wendy to come and show us what she's wearing because it's a good example of what I make out of these tablecloths. This is recycled denim, vintage tablecloth, and a piece of the plaid tablecloth that I was ta talking to you about. And it's a little Coco Chanel style jacket but with just one button and little pockets. And the idea is your shirt is going to show and you can do contrasting color or pull up She's pulled up the yellow on that one. And a vintage button. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> so this is a huge tablecloth. And it has giant theme of tulips up, up two of the corners and then a central running flowers going all the way around it. And it's really sturdy and doesn't look like it was ever even used. They often would put these things in the linen closet and never get to use them because grandma didn't want to get stains on them or something like that so and then 50 years go by okay next in the bag is a just a beautiful linen tablecloth with a faggoted edge this is a type of hand embroidery where they fold it up and do a little cut work stitch and it's damask I see there's a few small stains but I can get those out, as I've said before. It's just a giant piece that will help me make all of my other things that I do. And here is another one. This is linen, too. It's a good day for linen on this visit to the thrift store. It's got a beautiful, this is my favorite color, too, by the way, so I'm always attracted to that. Beautiful geometric design, and it will just, do perfectly in a lot of things like shirts like this or the other style of shirt that I showed you or next time I'm going to show you a dress that I make out of the vintage linen. Okay, moving right along. There are two India bedspreads. I'm going to ask my friend Linda to come and show us a dress that I make out of the India bedspreads. I love it having the border along the bottom and it's wonderful soft cotton it washes beautifully and you can see what a pretty dress this will make if in the similar shape of that with this border going along the bottom thank you Linda so there's two of those they definitely were donated by the same person so thank you whoever you are they're wonderful cotton. I can't wait to wash them and get them into you. And I see one more thing in the bottom of this bag number two. And it is another piece of linen. It's a little table runner or card table size tablecloth. Oops. Maybe I'm not going to get... No, I don't want to pull it. So this is half of it. And I will use this every inch of it because it's this focal point here you can do a lot of things using this as a blouse you want to zero in beautiful okay don't go away everybody we have one more bag and Wendy is just laughing about this that I picked this fabric out but wait till you see it I can think of a few things that I would love to make out of this. It's a big piece Sorry. of border print fabric. And it's got, are these cockroaches? No, they're crickets. It has crickets on it. 
in green and white, and it's a beautiful crisp black. It looks like it might be a hand batik. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll be able to tell after I wash it, probably. But there's four yards. It's really thick. It's not terribly wide. So that, oh well, no, it is probably about 48 or 50 inches wide. So that tells me maybe not brand new fabric. Somebody bought it in India or Asia somewhere, or it might, who knows, it could be African, but I don't think so. Anyway, you'll have to check in later and see what I have made of this. I am thinking I do do a cute jumpsuit with a border print. Maybe that'll be it. But I already have two friends here who are very, very interested in what I might make out of it. I can tell you that. And next in the bag is another very much smaller India spread. But it's beautiful with blue, blue on an off-white background with a green edging. This is I do a wonderful skirt that these pieces just practically oh, make themselves. And here, let me show you. This is one of the India tapestries. And this is a skirt that I do where I use recycled denim waistbands and I put great big pockets. And this is Velcro here. I call them industrial skirts just because they're kind of shabby chic and I do an overlocked um, stitched strip of denim around the bottom it kind of gives it weight and adds it connects the color on the way through and it's a interesting pattern that turns out to be it was the underslip of an old 1930s evening gown and it's not just an a-line skirt there's just an interesting little twist to it that Everyone loves these. Well, there's that. Oh, there is a shirt in here. Linda, put your shirt back on. No, just kidding. <laughs> I buy men's shirts, and I turn them into women's shirts. So I think you saw that. If you saw my last video, I was talking about that. I'll show you some on the next one if I don't get to it. This is a beautiful cotton shirt, and it's not a real big size, so it'll be perfect. There's a t-shirt I bought for myself. Don't need to show you that. And here are a couple of women, a, a couple of denim jackets. I tweak these. I take them apart, and sometimes I add something, but mostly I just take, I shorten them, and I add some lace. Uh, Linda's got one here. I leave, I do different things with the bottom. Sometimes I just leave it raw, but I turn up the cuffs and make it so that they will stay up like that and do some hand crochet. Hi, here I am back a day later. We had a little technical glitch, so we're finishing up the, the next episode uh, called number three. This is what the little denim jackets would look like with one of my skirts. And Nothing goes better with denim than a floral print. This is one of the old, the tapestry skirts that I made. So it was kind of a good thing about the glitch because this is a day later and I had a chance to wash that lovely linen tablecloth and iron it. So if you remember the beginning of, of this video, here it is, all ironed and beautiful. It's huge. It's 96 long by like 80 inches wide so that was a pretty darn big uh, dining room table that it was covering there are a couple of little faults but it's absolutely beautiful don't forget to check my business card for if you want to contact me or click the youtube buttons like and follow and respond or whatever you like and I'll see you again soon. Thank you.